Imagine this. Money fights with your spouse are a thing of the past. It's the future or bust. Imagine being able to talk about money with your spouse, think about your future, and not being worried about it, but actually excited about it. Show me the money! In today's video, we're going to give you 10 tips to create a budget you both love. Run. The most important thing is to know your why. Knowing your why will keep you motivated on the days you don't feel like sticking to your budget. So what is your why? Are you saving for a house? Is there a goal you have in mind? Is there a trip you have planned? Is there something you want to achieve? What is your why? 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 When we know our why, then it's not just creating a nerdy spending budget plan. It's actually doing something that's going to catapult us into something better in the future. Have a monthly business meeting where you discuss all of your expenses and plans for the month. Doing this allows you to avoid what Megan calls drive-bys. Drive-by! Where all throughout the month you're saying, hey, did you pay that bill? Hey, don't forget we got this birthday coming right. up. Hey, don't forget we need money for this. Mm -hmm. You have a plan, a business meeting once per month and you talk about the upcoming finances, birthdays, everything going on in the upcoming month. It will relieve so much stress from your marriage. Trust us. Nothing stresses me out. This way, when you're on a romantic walk in the park, hand in hand, you don't start a fight about money because you know, hey, we'll bring that up at the monthly business meeting. Sorry. Create a written budget for the month. This is super important. John Maxwell says it this way. A budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. How many times when we're not calculating or coming up with a plan for our money do we just wonder, where's our money? Right. In fact, most couples can't even tell me how much income they bring in on a monthly basis together. We'll keep track of all the money we spend with IOUs. So when you create a written budget, what you do is you have your total income coming in each month versus your outgo versus the expenses going out each month. So that all sounds fine and good, but how do you actually create a budget? So as you're putting your income versus your expenses, after all of your expenses for the month, there's either gonna be a surplus of money, mm -hmm. or there's gonna be no money left, right. or worst case scenario, you don't have enough money to pay for all your expenses. I'm gonna miss being able to afford food. If you don't have enough money to pay for all your expenses, you got two choices. Get rid of some expenses, mm -hmm. or get a part-time job. Options. Four. Which leads us to our next point, which is separate needs from once. And this is where so much of the conflict actually begins. So the biggest thing is to understand that there's no more me in this marriage. There's Gosh, a yes. we. Yeah. And we need to get on the same page when it comes to our money. Right. Not my money and her money, my debt, her debt, our money, our debt, yep. our savings plan. And so this is where with the extra money you have left, you separate your needs and wants. Right. What is something you need yes. versus something that you want? Groceries, a trip to the Bahamas, a trip to Bora Bora. In a hut. On the ocean. With a boat. And a monkey on your shoulder. In a see-through hot tub where you can see fish in the bottom. With a little umbrella in your drink. Why? Embrace the 50-30-20 rule. Yes, for all the math nerds out there, this is an actual rule financial advisors mm -hmm. have come up with. Now, we tweak it a little bit because we're Christians. So we do a 50-20-20-10 rule. 50% goes to your needs. These are paying your mm -hmm. bills. These are keeping the lights out in your home, right. food on the table, clothes on your back, those kinds of things. Then we're going to say 20% mm -hmm. goes to your wants. And we think this is very important. Treat yourself. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. I do. Wants include things that we want. So as a couple, Megan and I, we create some wants that we want together. Do we yep. want to go on a trip? Do we want to go out to eat with our friends? And then we have wants that are separate. Each mm -hmm. month, I get a portion of money. I can do whatever I want with. She gets a portion of money. She can do whatever she wants mm -hmm. with. Shopping. But the goal is to agree on the wants yes. before the month begins. The next 20% goes into savings. We have polled couples 
over the age of 60 and unanimously they say, we wish we would have invested more money into our retirement. Then that last 10% is to give. Yes. There's only three things you can do with money, spend, save, and give it. And giving is so much fun. The Bible says that you're more blessed to give than to receive. Six. This may be the most challenging tip of all. Track your spending and stick to your budget. What good is it to create a budget, have this monthly business meeting, and then not stick to it? Out the window. Our favorite way to track our finances is through an app and our favorite one that we use and highly recommend is the Every Dollar app by the Ramsey team. We'll put a link down below to that app if you are interested. Seven. Embrace no spend days. Ooh. Like literal days or weekends where you choose not to spend any money. Nada. Don't hate me ladies. Okay, this could be a swear word for some people <laughs> in their homes. I can't online shop today because Chris Rhea told me no. Yeah, the bare essentials. Create an emergency fund. We all need an emergency or rainy day fund because mm -hmm. sometimes things go wrong in life. Yeah. And usually what happens when things go wrong is we throw something on a credit card mm -hmm. and then we end up giving, getting ourselves into credit card debt right. with high interest rates and we continually stay behind with our finances. Having three to six months of expenses in a savings account will allow some room for you to breathe in case an emergency happens. Nine. Fine, free, fun. We are huge advocates that fun or date nights or family days do not have to cost you money. We regularly do things like go to the park, go to a bookstore or the library to check out books. We love going to coffee shops and playing board games and literally searching out free things to do in our city. Give it a Google. There are loads of free activities around there if you go on the hunt for them. I can think of something that doesn't cost any money that you can do together. Getting hot in here. Celebrate your wins. When you achieve a financial goal, celebrate it. Yes. I'll never forget when Meg and I, we had a goal to pay off all of our student loan debt. I think we had $17,000 of debt. Right. We paid it off in two years. Yeah, we did. And to celebrate that, we took a trip to Disney World. Not really. Okay, we didn't go to Disney World, but we did go to Florida. Which is basically Disney for adults. It's always good to celebrate yes. wins as a couple. It's something you accomplish together and actually boosts the connection between the two of you. 100%. So that's all we have for you today. No guilt, no shame. Absolutely. Throw them in the past. We've all done stupid things with money yes. in the past, including me and this one. No, Her not so much, actually. Hair. Me. So it's never too late to start doing the right thing with money, yes. creating a budget that you both will love and get excited about. We actually have a video and actionable steps in our marriage course yeah, on this subject. Walks you through exactly how to create a budget together from start to finish. The links to that marriage course to donate to No Small Life if you are interested. Everything you need to know, of course, it is down below in the description box. And if you have not yet subscribed to No Small Life, what are you waiting for? So have a great day, everyone. And remember, your life, it's not small. Bye, guys.